and they've got um, they've got the alleged biography by Ibn Ishaq, which is about 765 AD, which would be about 130 or 40 years after Muhammad died. But they don't actually have the Ibn Ishaq biography. They've got it. They've, that was just kind of disposed of and used by another um, Islamic writer. Another 50 years later, where he, he said he incorporated parts of what Ibn Ishaq said. So we only have a biography of Muhammad about 200 years after. It's a hadith about 250 years after that we start getting the collections, the famous collections. Now, obviously, when you get that time span between the events that are purported to be described and the actual recording of them, there's all kinds of scope for jiggery pokery. Yeah, well, that's, no, that's, that's and, and this is why, you know, you get people who say, look, look at what, look at early Islam. Look at what we know from, of it from the outside. Um, we have people launching um, battle armies into um, the Byzantine Empire and they're not espousing Islam. They're not, they're actually, they've been minting coins with images and crosses on. What sort of Muslims are these? This is the, uh, this is the, well, the 7th century AD. Muhammad dies in 632. The Arab armies are launching into, uh, into the Byzantine Empire, into, into Pal the Palestine area, in about 630 odd, 634 or whatever. They conquer, I think, Jerusalem in about 636, and they just, they're cutting like a hot knife through butter through the empire. But wherever they go, and they go into the Sasanian Empire, and they utterly obliterate it. Thanks be to God for our great Emperor Heraclius, who saves the Byzantine Empire, but the Sasanians suffer a horrible fate. And yet coins are minted by the Muslims there, which show the, um, the fire-worshipping religion of the Zoroastrians. So what on earth are, what are, what are the true Muslims doing that for? And then you, you, know, you get other things, not just the coins, but the failure to generally assert Islam. In the, the Christians don't seem to be seeing Islam in that first century. And, and then there's, there's the work on the question of the direction of the mosques, you know, all mosques must face Mecca. But all the mosques, for about the first hundred years, face in a different direction. They face away from Mecca, they face Jerusalem, which suggests that Jerusalem was the object of these so-called Muslims, who, who may well have been merely Arabs who had Hebraized. They basically taken on, and, and sort of taken on a kind of Aryan Christology. So this mishmash of a, of a religion, because in, in Arabia, the Byzantines and the Sasanians had used um, different Arab forces to fight their proxy battles against each other. And many of these Arabs who were used by the, by the um, Byzantines had a certain form of Christianity to which they adhered. Usually not Orthodox Christianity, but you see what could happen. A, a so-called prophet arises, a great warrior. He espouses a version of Christianity there's Jews around, he takes on board some of their teachings. Eventually they, they gather as a military force when Byzantium and the Sasanians have exhausted each other in battle and they come forward with an incomplete religion, an undefined religion, which only later gets defined. And by the time of the Hadith, it's read back, Islam is read back. It's read back into that century when Muhammad lived, because, but it wasn't really there. And this is a common practice, isn't it? You read things back, which weren't originally there. So that's, that seems to me a completely cogent way of looking at things, given the lateness of the recording of Islam. Unusual. Yeah, because if you had a Quran, as I said to the gentleman, from the, from, the, from, the, from the time of just after Muhammad, it doesn't say very much the Quran. It's just exhortations here and there, this, that and the other. The real meat and gristle of the Islamic religion is in the Hadith. You know? Yeah, yeah.